Hello, and welcome to episode 14, I'm going to have to check actually, of the Summer Knits podcast. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, um, occasionally fiber and spinning, but mostly knitting, um, where I share just what I've been working on, my plans, thoughts about different yarns, um, and anything that comes to mind really. I hope that you are having a wonderful day, um, a good week. I know it's been a rough start to 2022 for a lot of people, um, us included, and it's been a while since I've been able to film, so I'm glad to be back. Um, as you might notice, because it's creating a lot of glare on my glasses, I got a ring light, and if you watch the Crea Bea podcast, you might have heard Rebecca talk about how ring lights and glasses are terrible. Um, so I'm trying to find a position where it's not too much glare, but gives me a little bit of extra light. When I first set up in my craft room, it was a sunny day and there was light coming in the window. And today is completely overcast and there's just not enough light to really show um, colors accurately. So I, I did go ahead and turn the ring light on at about half power, and we're going to see if it just makes everybody crazy. Um, please let me know in the comments. If it just drives you nuts, then I won't use it again. Um, it's not like it was a big investment. But if it's not too bad, um, then I will, or I might try and find other positioning for it that's less in the line of fire um, of my glasses. But... That was a long intro. Anyway, welcome back. If you are a returning viewer, welcome. If you are a brand new viewer, um, please, if you enjoy the video, like and subscribe. And um, I really, I love your comments. I like engaging in conversation. That's primarily why I started my podcast is to connect with other knitters and just be a part of the wider knitting community all over the world. So Find me on Instagram, feel free to message me or comment here. However you would like to engage in conversation is great with me. I am always open to messages and comments. Um, I'll start real quick with what I'm drinking because I've really wanted to show this mug. Um, and I can't remember if I did right after it came, but I won a giveaway from Stone Cottage Pottery and Farm. And it wasn't this mug. I ordered this mug as an add-on when she did her shop update, and then she shipped everything together, um, the prize I won, plus this purple mug. And it's so pretty. You can see all the variation in color in there. Um, and I love the shape, and my drink stays nice and toasty. I wanted to um, mention her because she has been so lovely and, and wonderful in our conversations and everything she makes is so pretty. One of my goals is to get her counter worthy batter bowl in like the four or six cup size because they are beautiful and because I don't have a pretty stoneware um, batter bowl right now. I just have a couple of plastic pitchers that I use for that. But I am slowly but surely converting all of our dishes to handmade. And I did mention that if there was enough interest, I would do like a bonus episode showing the different items that we have invested in. It's, it's a slow process because it is an investment to, to go that direction, to have usable art in our kitchen. Um, so I think we have five or six handmade plates um, that are dinner sized. And dinner size for us is what a lot of places call salad size. We don't use giant plates. Um, and then we have a number of handmade bowls and they're all different artists. It's a very eclectic mix. And I'm just, um, it makes me really happy to pick out a mug in the morning or pick out a plate at dinner time. It doesn't match. It doesn't need to match. It is usable everyday art that can just be part of our lives. And I really love that. Um, so I just wanted to show this mug because it's so pretty and all of her stuff is pretty. And um, I think that you should check her out on Instagram. I will, of course, link her and everything else I talk about in the show notes below. Um, patterns, yarn dyers, and, of course, Stone Cottage, Pottery and Farm. 
So check her out on Instagram. Um, so I'm going to start with finished objects and then talk about some whips and a little bit of acquisitions. I actually have an overwhelming amount of acquisitions because of how long it's been since I filmed and because of the holidays. So I'm going to split it into two parts. Um, I'm going to talk about acquisitions that don't necessarily have a firm plan yet in this episode. And then I'm going to do a separate episode that is my make nine for 2022. And it's, I base my make nine on sweaters. I already have the yarn for except for one item in there. Um, so I'm going to go through my make nine, talk about the patterns I'm going to use the yarn I already have. Um, and hopefully this year is the year that I work through some of that stash and I realize some of it's new, so it's not really stash, but by the time I knit the sweater, it will be stash. Um, I realize when it gets hot, I'm going to probably abandon all sweater plans and go back to summertime knitting. And I think that I'm going to do a separate make nine for that in the spring. Um, I probably won't get to all nine of everything immediately. Um, but it's, it's a way to remember what my plans are for the yarn I've purchased and be more intentional about that. And then also to curate a wardrobe for myself um, and my kids of handmade items that I think will work with what we have and how we wear clothes and, and just our daily lives. So I hope you'll join me for that episode as well. Um, I will probably film it today as well, so forgive the repeat clothes because I probably won't change between. But let's start with my first finished object and what I'm wearing. You never did get to see it as a whip because I cast on on January 1st and I trimmed the final ends and, and blocked on January 10th. So I have now been wearing this sweater for three days straight because it's so lovely. I don't want to take it off. Um, it's going to be too hot to wear it this afternoon, but I thought I would get this episode filmed in the morning while it was still cool. So this is the Tulip Gansey by Midori Hirose of Ranunculus fame. I actually really love her patterns. They, um, they might be a little more detailed than somebody who likes a vague pattern um, wants, but they have uh, just the right amount of detail for somebody who wants to learn something new, try a different construction technique, and really um, make a beautiful garment and not have to worry that they're not understanding something or not doing something right. Um, she really does walk you through everything. There are video tutorials for techniques you might not know, and I think that that is wonderful. And her video tutorials are, um, she doesn't talk over them, there are subtitles, I think, or captions, um, but I think they would work no matter what your native language is because you can just watch her hands and what she's doing. Um, and I like the perspective of them because it's the same as me looking down at my knitting and I just have found her video tutorials to be very helpful. But the Tulip Gansey, um, it has a recommended ease of I think like 10 inches and I think I ended up with more than that, even though I made the size recommended for my bust size and I got gauged. Um, but it may have grown a little bit more in the blocking than my gauge swatch did. And that's okay with me. Um, my goal with this sweater was something warm and wooly. I have a trip to a cold, cold place planned and I wanted something that was just going to lock the heat in. So it is warm and wooly, but it is lightweight. I used um, DK Merino from Wooly Knit, and that is another rabbit hole I'm going to talk about when I get to the acquisitions. Um, so this was a 500 gram hank, which that was a challenge to wind up because my ball winder doesn't hold quite that much, but I did it. Um, and I had... 62 grams left over, I believe, when I weighed it at the end. So I used quite a bit of it. Um, it is, I did one extra inch in the length on the body. Let me move my chair and I can step back maybe and be able to show you. Um, so my natural waist is up here. I'm very short waisted. So I 
wanted it to hit like mid hip, which it does. Um, it is, like I said, it's kind of a, a box design, but the ribbing draws it in a little bit at the bottom. I have something in my back pocket that I'm going to take out before I turn around. But it, I think, is a beautiful fit. Um, and it has room for layering under it so that when I am in the cold, cold place, I can put enough layers on to be warm and still have this over the top and be comfortable. I don't like when you're trying to layer for warmth and the clothes become constricting and um, start to bind you up and, and it limits your movements. I really don't like that and it starts to bother me and drive me crazy. So I wanted something with enough room. I was very careful to make sure that the sleeves stayed nice and loose. Um, they are a bit long for me, but I think that that's just because I am so short. I think they are exactly the length the pattern wanted them to be, and they can be folded up, and that's not a problem at all, and it gives me just the right length. But I haven't had any issue, because the ribbing does hold them back, with um, the sleeves being the length that they are. So I did, I think, one extra inch in the stockinette section. I did not alter the cabled section at all. I love the tulip cables. I like the look that they give. Um, and also the cable repeat was super easy to memorize um, and a joy to knit. It just, it went so fast. The ladder panel is very easy. Um, the construction was new to me because you start with a shoulder and there is short row shaping to create one side. Then you do the other side and then they are joined with additional stitches cast on and then you begin the cable panel. So you knit the front cable panel and then you do the same thing on the back but the shaping is slightly different because there's additional short rows to raise the neckline in the back. Um, and then you knit that ladder and cable panel and then join everything and go. Um, and I don't want to say too much else about it because it is a paid for pattern. Um, the sleeve stitches are picked up and then knit down. Like I said, it was, the actual knitting time was only eight days and then there was the weaving in of the ends and blocking. Now, the only reason I was able to get it done that quickly is because A, it's knit on size nine, US size nine needles, um, which are big. And, well, for me, I've been knitting on very tiny needles, so big needles for me. Um, and then also our whole family got sick for a week over the Christmas break. And so I didn't do much besides lay in bed and knit or lay in front of the TV and knit, um, because it was just exhausting to get up and move around for very long. After we all got better then one of the kids brought home a stomach virus and I spent a whole nother day laying around doing nothing because it hurt to move. So, um, that is how I was able to bust out what was basically an eight day sweater, nine if you count the weaving in of the ends and soaking. Um, but I'm super happy with it because I've checked off my very first item from my Make Nine and it is my very first woolly knit yarn, um, which I ordered on their Black Friday special and I'm super excited about the others that I received from them. Um, it's the only DK that I ordered from them, and I did love how quickly it knit up and how much it um, bloomed when it was blocked, and I just, I look forward to it softening up even more as I wear it. It is a little bit prickly around my neck, but I get a little sensitive only when it's actually a little bit warm for wearing wool. So, like today, when it's going to get to almost 70 degrees outside, It'll start to itch just because I'm getting too hot in it. Um, when I'm cold, I don't find that it itches at all. So like I said, I've been wearing it continuously almost for like three days and, and I'm absolutely in love. So the Tulip Ganzi by Midori Hirose. I 100% recommend this pattern. I will link it below. It is amazing. And I went ahead and entered it as a finished object on the cabled sweater knit along that's being hosted by the crazy sock lady and sock witchery um and i was super excited about that because it was a new to me cable and it just went so quickly so anyway 100 percent recommend go ahead and give this pattern a try and let me know if you do or if it's on your list 
because I also want to do a summer weight one in um, a fingering or lace weight yarn. She shows options with a boat neck um, and sleeveless, and so it would go even faster because it would be an open and airy gauge, and um, you wouldn't have the picking up stitches and the sleeves, and you wouldn't have the picking up stitches for the neckline because to do the boat neckline, you end up just finishing off um, basically what you started with, and I don't think you pick up anything to to finish the neck off. So that is um, maybe going to go in my summertime, make nine, another tulip gansey because it, it was just such a joy to knit. Um, before I made the tulip gansey, I actually did a couple other things. I finished off my... Um, Shortbread socks, the test knit I did for Brogan of Wooly Witchcraft. I had done one sock um, because that was all that was required for the test knit. And I was in the middle of trying to finish Christmas gift knitting. Um, so I had done one and followed the pattern exactly. Well, after Christmas, I decided to do the second one so that I'd have a full pair and I could wear them. And of course, I've held them on the sock blockers until now and not worn them because I wanted to show them still clean and pretty on the podcast. Um, but also I wasn't paying attention when I did the second one and I didn't actually count to see that I had half my stitches on each side of my magic loop and I ended up doing my heel across more than half my stitches. So you can see that one heel is deeper than the other um, just because I wasn't paying attention. I actually find that I like the deeper heel. It does take up more than half the stitches, but it wraps farther around my heel, and I think that it might actually wear nicer. Um, so we're going to see, but I will definitely let you know how I feel once I'm actually wearing them on my feet on the regular. I am super excited about these because I've been wanting to do this color combination for a long time, but it's not a color combination that I wear on the top half of me. Um, I'm not really into like fall colors and things like that. I don't, they don't, they don't do my skin any favors. So, um, but I wanted to do them just because it, for some reason, this color combination, like once I laid these yarns next to each other, just like popped to me and it was just, I really wanted to do it. So I think making these, um, socks was the perfect thing because I was able to hold the sock yarn double and whip these out so fast. So these are the shortbread socks from the Biscuit Tin Sock Collection by Brogan Murray of Wooly Witchcraft. And if you haven't seen that collection, there are three patterns in it. I fully intend to make the other two patterns as well, but the shortbread socks is the one I test knit. So highly recommend. It was well written, easy to follow, and I can't wait to actually put those on my feet because when I did try them on, they fit me better than a lot of socks. Even when I make the women's small size, um, I find that if I follow the recommendations, I end up with loose socks. So I've been trying to figure out my happy place for hand knit socks, but I've been so into garment knitting that I haven't spent a lot of time. Um, you might remember... Way back in September, I cast on a pair of vanilla socks, and I haven't finished them yet, but it was in an effort to try and figure out my ideal stitch count and where I really wanted to be so that I could make myself a drawer full. And I tried to decide. I need to slow myself down. I feel like I'm, like, rushing through all my words. Um, take a breath. I know that there's so much to talk about because it's been so long, and I haven't had the house to myself in what feels like forever. And I almost didn't today either, but my husband took the littlest one to work with him. So, yay. Um, so I have just a couple of hours and, and I feel like I have a lot to say because it's been so long. Um, but I'm gonna try and slow down and be a little more mindful of how quickly I talk. One of the goals I thought about setting in the new year was a pair of socks a month and on thinking about it I couldn't decide if that was something that would make me happy or something that would make 
me feel pressured um, to knit on something that might not inspire me at that moment in time. I want the finished socks. Like, that's not a question. I really want the finished socks. I love hand knit socks. Um, and maybe if I did a DK pair a month, I could do it. But I also want to be able to pursue the, um, the projects that are like really inspiring me or really speaking to me or the yarns that, um, are just making me really happy. Like as much as I want the finished objects, I want the experience to be joyful and fulfilling and not another job. So I decided not to set that particular goal this year. Um, I would like to make myself more hand knit socks, but I'm not necessarily going to make myself do a pair a month. Um, so more on that later. My next finished object actually also was before this. Um, on Christmas Eve, I gave um, a little roll brim hat to my kid's step cousin, my husband's stepsister, her daughter. Um, so we'll just call her cousin because really that's how we think of her. Anyway, I gave her a little roll brim hat um, and my husband's stepmother um, tried it on and it's very stretchy so it fit just fine. But um, she has limited movement in her hands and she wants a hat she can put on and take off herself. And she found the roll brim to be ideal to get a hold of because of the way her fingers are curled and pull on and be able to get a hold of and take off by herself and actually get it into position well. So she asked if I would knit her a hat. And I've always been hesitant to knit much for her because I know her daughter knits and I didn't want to, I don't know, I didn't want to feel like I was trying to take over that. I know that's, uh, it's really silly, but I didn't want to step on anybody's toes. Um, and I wanted to be respectful of not feeling like I was usurping something that she did for her mom. Um, but she doesn't knit much. Um, and I don't know that she's done much beyond scarves in a while. So she asked if I would knit her a hat and, um, and I said, yes, I would. And so I couldn't decide if she would rather have a surprise or pick her own yarn. So I texted her daughter and my father-in-law some pictures of yarn that I had and they chose this one. Um, so this is a really beautiful hand dyed yarn and I love how it knit up. Um, I think it makes a really pretty roll brim hat. I made the roll extra rolled. Like when I blocked it, I rolled it in a lot so that she can really get a hold of it um, and pull it on. So there's a lot of roll brim, um, but it's like all these purples and she loves purple. Um, it actually kind of goes with my hair right now a little bit. So I just messed my hair all up, but that's okay. Anyway, so I want to um, give it to her this weekend, but I wanted to show it real quick on the podcast. So it's got like some deep greens and little flecks of like burgundies and rust and purple and pink and all these wonderful things. I only used 45 grams and I had a hundred gram skein. So I have 55 left over. I could do a whole nother hat or a brim hat even, um, like a longer brim. It, the colorway is eternal flame and it was Ellie and Ada hand dyed yarns is a superwash merino DK. Um, so it's 246 yards per hundred grams. So I have a little more than half left. Um, and it says it was hand dyed in County Meath. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Ireland. Um, it says each skein is unique and colors may bleed first few washes, which it did bleed in blocking, even though I used cold water, but I don't feel like she's going to be throwing it in the wash at all, really. Um, it's a hat that's probably going to hang up with her coat until she goes out. Um, 
and I really don't think it's going to get thrown in the wash. But since I have all this leftover, I was trying to decide if she'd be able to put on like fingerless gloves that didn't go up too high because um, I wouldn't want them to get in the way of her manipulating the joystick on her wheelchair. But I wondered about making matching fingerless mitts like just to help keep her hands warm because um, she gets cold really, really easily. So I'm going to hold on to this little more than half a skein and figure out if you have an idea of a matching thing that would be helpful or a DK weight um, fingerless mitt pattern that's not overly complex. Um, I mean, not that that would bother me, but I want something that is, is simple because the yarn is busy and I want the color to be the standout, not um, a stitch pattern, if that makes sense. I think you'd lose a stitch pattern in the busyness of this really pretty yarn and this yarn should really take center stage. So I really enjoyed making the hat for her because it felt really nice to be asked um, to know that the person that you're making something for like really wants it and is going to appreciate it and everything. Um, and that was stash yarn that I had been gifted. So um, I was super happy to have it be used in such a loving and meaning, meaningful way. Um, so it, it makes me happy when I'm able to go to my stash and find like the perfect thing. And I realize that I have way too much stash, but that's okay. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any other finished objects. I don't think so. Um, so I'm going to move on to works in progress. I'm going to lean and reach awkwardly for things and it's just going to be a thing. So works in progress. Um, I cast on the Straya cardigan back when there was a knit along for it last year on like October 30th. And I didn't get very far because I had so much else on the needles. And then with gift knitting, I just, I just didn't get anything done on it really. Um, so I have been picking it back up again in the evenings when I am able to focus on my knitting because it is not a mindless knit. Um, there is a, like a progress keeper chart to check off the rows so that you can remember what rows are increases. Um, and so it's just something that I need to be able to sit down, have a pencil next to me, mark things off, read the pattern rows on the increase rows and stuff and just like keep up with it that way. So I've made a little progress. It doesn't look like a lot because this cardigan is done on size two needles and let me untangle it real quick. Um, it's like 50 rows to four inches for the row gauge, which is a lot of knitting. Um, I only knit for like an hour or two after the kids go to bed um, of focus knitting where I'm sitting down paying attention to it and it depends on how tired I get too. Um, so this is the right side. It is half fisherman's rib, fingering weight on size two needles. Um, and it's so pretty. I am using um, an undyed sock yarn Happy Feet, um, it's actually meant for dyeing yourself. It's called Happy Feet Dye For You, but um, I'm using it undyed. And then a set of minis that I had called Easter Peeps. So you can see I've gotten four of the colors on there so far. And there are there is one color that I haven't gotten to yet. And I'll just keep repeating in that same order. Um, it's, it's going to be a lovely staple piece, I think. It's going to be a labor of love. It's just, it's going to take me a long time. And I know some people busted it out during that cow, and they are awesome. Um, I don't know if it's they were able to focus on it um, or what, but the end result is going to be a lovely striped cardigan. And, sorry, this is Straya by Drea Reynani. 
Drea Renee Knits. Um, I... <laughs> the screen went off on my computer. <laughs> I guess I've been talking a long time. Um, I tend to love Andrea Mowry's patterns. Part of it is because um, she is short-waisted and I'm short-waisted, so the way she writes her patterns a lot of times work for my body really well. So when I do get to that Make 9 video, you're going to find a lot of Andrea Mowry patterns in that. And I'll probably mention this cardigan again because since I had already cast it on and I knew I had the yarn, it is in my Make 9. And I am hopeful to finish it. Um, I'd love to have it by Easter because I feel like the colors are just perfect for spring and it being fingering weight. Um, it's going to be a lightweight cardigan. Anyway, I'm keeping it in a Megan Makes Do project bag, and it's one I bought when she was donating money, I think, to the the Trevor Project, um, which I fully support, and it's just such pretty colors. It's like totally my colors. It's bright, and it's beautiful, and then it's got this, um, I forget if it's a leather bottom or a faux leather bottom, but anyway, it sits up nicely, and it holds a whole sweater. Um, at least in my size, so I really love it. Um, the next thing I have in progress is another muscle burr hat. And actually, I didn't get to show it on the podcast, and then she wore it to school today. I made a second muscle burr hat um, over Christmas break in time to put it in my daughter's um, Christmas presents and I used the leftover yarn from her Anchors Junior sweater, so it matches um, and it reverses. So one side has like the pinks and purples, and the other side has like blue and cream. I forget if it's a couple of shades of the blue. Anyway, I used, because the, the yarn was self-striping in huge chunks, so I did cut it in a couple of places to make sure I got more of the colors in, but she loves it, and she was actually asking me about the construction, about how to make one. So I might help her knit her own um, at some point, and I think that she would enjoy that. But I started one for me. So I have this gorgeous yarn. Let me grab the ball band. Um, got it. So it is called Yarn, well, the brand is Yarn Time Knits, Hand Dyed Yarns and Knits, um, Hand Dyed in Maine. There's an Etsy shop, yarntimeknitshop.etsy.com. Um, and I've had it for a couple of years, so I have not looked into that Etsy shop. But it is called Scattered Jewel Sparkle. The yarn is 90% superwash merino and 10% lurex. It is a fingering sock two-ply, um, 411 yards per 100 grams. And then it recommends needle size one to three, which is standard for fingering weight yarn. But um, it is a yarn that my husband and kids gave me on Mother's Day, I think in 2020. I can't really remember what year, but, um, and it's beautiful. Look at all those colors. There's like flecks of green and purples and different shades of blue. And it just, it really does sparkle like gemstones. And I am a thousand percent in love with the color. However, it is a two-ply and it is a loosely spun two-ply. So it has come apart more than once. And I checked for like bug damage because of how many places it was coming apart. Um, as I knit with it. So it's a matter of don't pull too hard on the yarn. Um, you know, and maybe it's a matter of there were places of damage, but I have had to rejoin a number of times. Now I have tied square knots, um, to keep the yarn in place for now. And I am going to weave in the ends a little bit in either direction, um, from each change point. So that it stays, but since it's going to be inside a muscle burra, um, I'm not going to worry too much about how much I weave in the ends, and I'm not even going to bother to trim them. They're going to be tucked up inside. Um, it'll just be extra yarn. 
add extra warmth, whatever. So my big question right now is, do I stay with the scattered jewels for the entirety of the muscle burrow? Or at the halfway point, which is soon, um, probably have a bit more to go before halfway. I don't really want a folded brim. I just want um, beanie style, but reversible. Um, I said um a lot, sorry. Do I want to just do the whole thing in this? Because it is gorgeous and it is so soft. And I know that sometimes the Lurex, the shiny, can be scratchy. But this really is not. Um, so I don't think it's going to bother me on my ears and my forehead. But I also have like a really deep purple um, in Malabrigo sock yarn that I could switch to for the other half and have a reversible. And then maybe I would have enough of the of this, the scattered jewels, left over to do another one for my daughter or something. Um, I'd have to weigh it and see how much I have left. But I don't know. I'd love to know what you think if I should. I did post an Instagram story asking this, but I, I don't know if some of the people that voted had any idea about the construction of the Musselboro hat. So if you think I should just do the entire tube in this, and just have it two layers of this, let me know. Or if you think I should switch colors at the midpoint so that I have basically two hats in one, let me know. I'm open to either and I just can't decide, so your input would be great. So that's my mindless knitting project because I'm to the point where it's just stockinette going round and round and round. And um, I keep it in my backpack so that it can just go with me. The other thing that I cast on, um, where is it? Sorry. I cast on on Wednesday was a pair of DRK everyday socks um, for my husband because my trip to the cold place does not include him and it is near Valentine's Day. So I wanted to make him something special um, and I've been on a quest to make him hand knit socks that like really fit well because early in my sock knitting, I didn't really know as much about gauge and fit and wanting a certain amount of negative ease and stuff. And I just like blindly followed whatever pattern I was working on, um, without really thinking about like what I wanted from the sock in the end. Um, and I didn't know as much about modifying and deviating from the pattern and stuff. So I cast on these DRK everyday socks. Um, and I started with a little bit of multicolored yarn. I'm hopeful that you can see the colors well. Oh yeah, that looks like pretty true to um, And then I moved on to, and I think that that's a Regia sock yarn. Um, that I used for the toes. I'm going to use it for the toes and heels. Um, and it, I think, does have, let's see. Um, it probably does have some nylon in it. Yeah. Um, but I thought that that might make for stronger toes and heels. I don't know if it will disqualify me from the rustic knit along, um, but the majority of the socks are actually a no nylon sock yarn. They are um, a merino tensile sock and the tensile is from Eucalyptus. The yarn is from Forest Lane Fiber Company. They were having a moving sale over the holidays and that is another one of those acquisitions that I have too many of. Um, so I bought this color, which is called Portobello. So it's this um, 
it's almost a greeny gray. Definitely a mushroom color. Um, but it's a color that would go with my husband's wardrobe really, really well. And um, I don't think that he's into neon colored socks. I mean, I've bought him some silly socks before, but I think that this is more something that he would actually appreciate. And I, since they're for him, I feel like it should be something he cares more about than something I care more about. So, um, and it's, it's really nice in the hands and I know I've just started with it, but, um, it feels nice so far to knit with. I am a little concerned about my gauge though, because I don't feel like the ribbing is pulling in at all, but I realize I'm still very close to the stockinette toe. So I'm going to give it a bit more time. Um, but I just think that they'll be nice, usable, everyday socks. Um, I am using some fairly sharp needles because it was all of the 2.25 millimeter needles that I had, I think. Um, yes, 2.25 millimeter needles that I had laying around. The first ones that I pulled out were 2.5s, and I'm such a loose knitter that that was not going to work. Um, the last pair of DRK everyday socks that I did for my daughter was definitely on the 2.25s, not the 2.5s. Um, and that's another thing I'm trying to figure out what really is my sock gauge. Um, cause it kind of depends on the pattern, um, and how, how relaxed I am when I'm knitting. I know that sounds silly, but it's true. Like, you know, you get more tense and you have a, a tendency to tighten up. Um, so if it's something super easy, like just stockinette or ribbing, I have a tendency to relax a lot. Um, whereas if it's cables or something I have to count or pay attention to, I have a tendency to tighten up a bit more on the socks. So, um, uh, that is, I think my last work in progress. I'm still working on my elf mail and yes, I am going to draw for those prizes. Um, but I have not finished it. I did make some progress on the body. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do short sleeves though, cause it is, thin enough that I feel like it could be a good spring garment for my climate. Um, so I'm going to see, I'm going to weigh the yarn I have left when I finish the body to the length I want it and then decide on the sleeves. It might end up short sleeve or it could end up elbow length sleeves. Um, I haven't decided yet, but definite possibilities. And I still, I still love the garment. I just have not finished it yet um, or really dedicated as much time to it as I could. I wonder if I should alternate evenings working on that versus working on the Strya cardigan. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I, I have tried the method that the Marvelous Mrs. Maker on Instagram recommends where you set a timer and work on one project and then when it goes off you reset it and start the next project and you give a little bit of time to each project. And overall, I know it's harder to feel like you've made progress, but you've made some progress on everything. So if there are projects that you really are having a hard time finishing, that is a good method to try where you just give yourself, I'll do 20 minutes on this one, 20 minutes on this one, 20 minutes on this one. And then you can start back over at the beginning and do another 20, 20, and 20. Um, or whatever it is that you need, tens, fives, um, to get something done. I think next I'm going to kick into the acquisitions. Give me just a sec. I'm back. There were a couple of things that I forgot to talk about that I really wanted to. So I want to jump back to them. Oh, I feel like my chair is hitting my table behind me and making some noise. So hopefully that wasn't happening for that first 45 minutes. Um, but if it was, please forgive me. So I have had a mending pile for ages that I had not gotten to. Um, and I finally, on Wednesday, pulled something out of it and actually looked at it closely and decided what I needed to do for it. So, this is the first ever sweater that I knit. Um, 
I knit it in January of 2007 when I lived in California. Um, and I had a wonderful knitting group. Um, it was the Ventura County Stitch and Bitch. And we met, um, met at a bookstore on Fridays and we met at a shop called Ava's Needlework on Monday evenings, I think it was. Anyway, I'm um, trying to get you the accurate color here. Um, so this is like blues, um, well, like a, a purpley blue, a blurple, um, with like yellow mustardy rust, but also like this faded lavender bits in between some of it and like a greeny color. Anyway, um, not necessarily colors I would pick now, although I love the blurple, um, that is the main color is just so pretty. It is a hundred percent wool. Um, it is very rustic and toothy. Um, and I would have to go back and look at my, I posted it on Instagram, the, the name of the yarn, but, um, anyway, it had a hole, whether from wear and tear or moths. I don't know. Um, like I said, it's an older sweater and it had developed, I don't even know if you can see it anymore, a little hole that ran down the length of like four rows. And I had some of this yarn still in stash. So I turned the sweater inside out and I duplicate stitched a big patch, like so that it surrounded the hole on either side, but I just duplicate stitched. I went back and forth on the back side um, far enough that even if the front started to come open a little bit more, it, um, it would protect it from going too far. But also it's such a toothy yarn, such a woolly yarn and easily felted that, um, I'm going to reblock it. I was waiting to show it here first. I'm going to reblock it and that will really help lock that repair in. It was the only repair that was needed, which is why I wonder if it was wear and tear and not like um, bug damage because there weren't any other holes in the sweater itself. Um, it has a cropped fit. I showed um, pictures on my Instagram, but it has a crop fit and rather fitted sleeves. Um, but I really, I still love it and it's very warm. Like I said, a very rustic and toothy wool. So I'm going to give it a nice soak now and, um, I'm going to reblock it just because it's been years and it was probably only steam blocked to begin with because I'm not sure if I had blocking mats back then. I used to just lay things on towels. Um, and I did a lot more steam blocking because I didn't like, didn't really understand the soaking of the fibers. Um, now I soak things for a minimum of 15 minutes, sometimes up to an hour. Um, I soaked this sweater for an hour in some, um, I think I used Euclid this time. Is that how you pronounce it? Anyway, I have multiple wool washes, but my husband gave me a big bottle of Euclid for Christmas in the lavender scent, and it's very light and smells very good. But I also have a bottle of soak and a bottle um, of wool wash from the Creative Knitter. So I'm going to give this a nice long bath and pin it all back out so that it has good shape. It's, it's held its shape really well though. I think because it is a hundred percent wool and very rustic, it has held its shape phenomenally over time. So I just wanted to show that garment real quick. And also I just realized that I don't think I have filmed since I finished my son's Firefly Raglan. So we're jumping all the way back to finished objects. Um, look at this beauty. So I blocked it the same day. I, it had laid in my bedroom unblocked since I finished it. I finished it on December 31st, so I know I haven't shown it. Um, so I finished it December 31st, and I didn't have enough of the Firefly color to do the cuffs and bottom ribbing, so I went ahead and used the navy. And I don't know. It's such a dark navy. I think it's going to read black on the screen, but I promise you it's a navy. Um, but I like the way the dark navy ribbing ties in with the rest of it. So I think that it turned out really well. And my son saw it and he is so excited. He's six 
and it's adorable how excited he gets for hand knits. Um, the other night he was actually asking me about knitting and about how you knit and stuff and so I think I actually am going to help him make his own hat and I think he's going to be very into that um, because he likes to build things and so you end up with a finished object and I think that he's excited for that process but he's super excited to wear this sweater. I have not let him wear it to school yet because it is really nice yarn. Um, unlike his sweater from last fall that was inexpensive yarn that I don't mind him playing in, this was really nice yarn. So while I want him to wear it because I don't want him to outgrow it and not have worn it, I'm hesitant to let him wear it to school. So we'll see. But um, I might let him wear it tomorrow because it's going to be super cold here and I can bundle him up in it and hey, he's just going to be so cute. It's a little bit big on him, but I'm hoping that that means that he can wear it for a couple of years. Um, like I said, he's only six, but he's and he's very, very petite for six. Um, and I did make the size six, but at a slightly looser gauge than the pattern. Um, I liked the fabric that I was getting from the needles I was using, and I didn't want to go down another needle size just to um, get it just a tiny bit smaller. To match the pattern gauge so um, that is the good old raglan um, I don't remember who wrote it but it will be linked below and the yarns are um, firefly hand dyed by southern skeins and then um, a navy that I have misplaced the ball band for that I grabbed at my local yarn store because it coordinated with the hand dyed so I will list all the things below um, but I'm super excited to get to share that because it's finished and I know you guys saw it as a work in progress for quite a while. And I love it. I love it. Okay. I really am onto the acquisitions now because there are a number of them. Some of it is because um, there were gifts for Christmas and some of it is because there were sales and I couldn't help myself. Um, but I tried to shop the sales with more intention. Um, and then some of it is my usual subscription and things like that. So thank you for being here. If you're not into acquisitions, I totally understand. Um, it's not everybody's thing, but if you're into that, I hope that you stick around, um, and enjoy some of these things with me because I'm very excited to share them. I will start easy with my subscription box for the Not Sock Yarn box from Southern Skeins. Um, this was the December box and it is a bulky merino single, 80% um, superwash merino and 20% nylon, 75 yards and 100 grams and wow is it Christmassy, like boom Christmas. So I have two skeins of this. So I was looking up patterns on Ravelry, considering that I have 200 grams, and I think that I'm going to do a bulky weight, like one of those pointy Christmas Santa style hats with this um, for next Christmas. And I think it'll be the kind of thing that like either kid can wear, I can wear, it doesn't matter. Um, I'll do a ribbed brim so that it's stretchy and so that any of us could wear it. And I just think that that will be a fun way to use up this super soft, bulky weight yarn. Because I don't, I don't knit with bulky a lot, but I think that that'll be a really fast, just fun thing for us to have. Um, and the subscription box comes with goodies. Hold on, sorry. There's going to be a bit of crinkle, and I apologize for that. Um, I love this little... It is a two inch ruler so it's a cat um, and it says southern skeins but it measures two inches and you can really um, you can see how when you put it against your knitting there are the ends of the ruler that stick up so it's really easy to accurately count the stitches within a two inch section because of how the ruler is built 
Um, and I realize gauge is usually measured over a four inch section, but this is kind of a handy little thing just to have in your bag. Um, there was, of course, a candy cane. This really adorable sticker that says sweater weather. And then, sorry, it's going to crinkle when I open it. Ah! Too much crinkle. Okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry. There was a, oh, is there too much reflection? Can you see that? Oh, he got turned backwards. Hold on. This is a little snowman progress caper. He's so cute. Sorry, he's so wiggly. Stop wiggling, buddy. Um, and then there was a packet of hot chocolate. <laughs> and I'm sure because of the way COVID's been, a sanitizer wipe, which is kind of funny. So lots of goodies in my Southern Skeins, not sock box. Um, if you are into surprises, she has a monthly sock box and a monthly not sock yarn box. The not sock yarn box bases vary every month. The sock yarn one um, is always sock yarn and it's I think consistently the same sock yarn every month. Um, but she is focusing this year more on brighter colors. So if you are into brights, um, that is the direction that she is going right now. So look her up on Etsy and I will link her below. Let's talk about that woolly knit sale. And yes, the shipping across the pond was a bit. It was. So I got this 500 gram DK Hank and then the rest I got are cones. Um, and this is a thousand percent Rebecca from the Crea Bea podcast fault and then we'll pile some faults on to Inga from Knitting Traditions and then maybe Brogan from Woolly Witchcraft told me do it do it do it um so I had shopped the Black Friday sale and because of the overseas shipping had to then request a shipping quote and by the time they got back to me the sale had ended so when I went back to my cart to check out, the prices were all back up. And so I asked and they were like, oh no, we'll honor the, the sales price. And I said, okay, great. Let me know, you send me an invoice and, and I'll pay it. Um, and then I didn't hear anything for like a week because they were so busy packing orders from that sale. Um, and so during that time is when I got that other yarn on sale from the same place I got my husband's sock yarn because they were having a moving sale and I thought I wasn't going to end up getting this yarn because I hadn't heard anything for like a week and so I bought that other yarn and then of course they finally did get back to me and so then I bought this yarn. <laughs> so this is the yarn to cone. This is the British wool. Um, I think this one is Corvette blue. Um, it is not quite as dark as a navy but not, not light enough to be like, I don't know, maybe you could call it a royal blue. Um, anyway, it's a gorgeous shade. I love it. I have not yet decided what to do with it. Um, I got a cone of the Merino in purple, and it is a, like a, a dark purple, um, a royal purple, a little bit redder maybe than some royal purples. I don't know. It's purple. Can you see it? I'm hoping that you're going to get some color accuracy here eventually. Um, but the label is blowing out. So this one is a, a cone of the Merino. Um, the cones are 500 grams. And then I got a cone of the, um, the undyed, the natural. So the natural, I was thinking about doing a, um, what's that petite knit pattern? No frills sweater. I was thinking about doing a no frills sweater, holding the natural with this, um, alpaca, Surrey alpaca, um, which is a, a super light purple that's just gorgeous and super soft. And I have, I have four skeins 
of this and each skein is 328 yards. So I think I'd have plenty to put them together to do a no frill sweater. Let me know what you think of that combo. Um, you know, this is like a, a light fingering, but would be super warm because it's 100% pure wool. And then I love, love the feel of Surrey alpaca. Like I could bathe in Surrey alpaca. It is my favorite fluff on the planet. Um, I love the look of mohair a lot, but if I have to pick a single fluff, Surrey alpaca is definitely where it's at for me. Um, this is Pancake and Lulu yarn, and you might have seen in my Instagram stories that I got a whole order of Pancake and Lulu, um, and I'll be talking about that in my Make 9 video. So I have that from Wooly Knit, and you know, some thoughts on things I could do. I think that this or the purple would make a really lovely ranunculus. Um, I loved my Christmas ranunculus so much and I wore it as much as I could, but it was so hot here through the month of December that I didn't get to wear it a ton. And yet I feel like it's too Christmassy to continue to wear it in the new year. So it's getting put up until next year. But that just means I'll have something exciting to pull out and wear next year, right? Um, so other acquisitions. I got another sock yarn from, sorry, I'm not super organized this morning. Um, I got another sock yarn from Forest Lane Fiber Co. in their moving sale. And it is kind of a, um, a deep purpley plum color. It is the High Twist Merino Sock. It's 100% High Twist USA Merino. It is 100 grams, is 415 yards, and the color is called Galaxy. And like I said, it's a deep plum. I'm not sure how accurately the color is showing up there, but it's really nice and like bouncy. So um, between the sock yarn I bought to make my husband's socks, um, the Portobello with the tinsel from Eucalyptus, and this, I was trying some no nylon, no plastic sock yarns just to see how they wear um, and how I enjoy knitting with them and stuff. And this feels like it's going to be a joy to knit with. Like, it is gorgeous and squishy and it feels like it's going to be super warm on my feet. So I'm very excited for that. I also got, let's see... One, two, three, four, five, six. Six! I also got six skeins of this Rustic Lux Single Ply. It is 100% Romney and Targi wool with Surrey Alpaca and Tussa, Tussa Silk. Um, it is, it is wow. It is awesome. It is 440 yards to 100 grams. It's fingering weight. The color is pewter. It's a deep gray. I have six skeins. That's a lot. Um, so originally I couldn't decide, was I going to make a sweater for my husband? Is that why I ordered so much? I'm trying to remember what patterns I was looking at when I decided to order six of these. Um, and I don't remember, but that's okay. Uh, I think maybe the reason that I ordered six is I was thinking of holding it double for something. Um, because that would give me you know over 1100 yards right over 1100 yards of DK basically if I held it double um, so that would be plenty for a sweater for me if I hold it single I have way more than enough for a sweater for me because at 440 yards six of these I mean that is a lot of yardage but it's amazing and I can't wait to swatch it and um, wash it and see what happens because it's got like I said it's got Surrey alpaca and Tussa silk in with the Romney and Targi wool 
and I'm just I'm just really excited about this. If you have not heard about Forest Lane Fiber Co. before, you really should look her up. I was so thrilled with this package when it came. I mean, just, I can't even tell you. So if you're looking for no nylon sock yarns, definitely check out, um, like I said, there's the high twist merino, and then there's the one with tensile from eucalyptus in it. So check out Forest Lane Fiber Co. I sent a bunch of Christmas cards and a few stash sharing packages, um, over the month of December, basically. Um, so those of you who signed up for my Christmas card, um, exchange, it wasn't really an exchange. It was more, I was just sending you Christmas cards, which was great. Um, but I got so many Christmas cards in return that I just want to say a really big thank you. I have the most wonderful community here on YouTube and I just, I love you all and, and thank you so much. And, um, if you ever want to exchange handwritten letters or notes, I am a hundred percent up for that. Feel free to leave a comment or message me. Um, but I also got some surprise packages in the mail and I can't tell you how wonderful that made me feel. And then to see people posting about receiving the surprises that I sent out was also just so lovely. Um, so thank you for making the holiday season really special. And I'd like to share some of the things that I got in the mail. I tried to keep names with things, um, but it's hard sometimes with kids. So hopefully I remember where everything came from and stuff is still all together. Um, but Laura sent me, um, Laura is from Oregon and she sent me the, I think it had a, an adorable card in with it also, but this is Stonehenge Fiber Mill Crazy Sport Weight, 230 yards to 75 grams. And then, and it is, it's like really fun and is going to make an awesome hat, but also attached to the yarn. There are um, a stitch marker that is a tiny ruler and a progress keeper that is a popsicle. So those are adorable. Thank you so much, Laura. And this is like so squishy. Um, I think the colors are speaking to me for my daughter or as a gift um, because that light pink I think with the aqua is something that my daughter would really like, but I'm excited to have that and I really appreciate it. Um, then I also received, I don't know who this book came from. It had a postmark from Salt Lake City, Utah, but no card, no name, no return address. Nothing to help me determine who sent this book. Um, so I, I love it and I appreciate it. And I want to thank whoever sent it so much, but it is patterns for Gansey's jerseys and errands, fishermen's sweaters from the British Isles. Um, and you can tell that it is an older book, like just flipping through it, looking at the patterns, it, it, it's an older book. Everything inside is black and white, but the time I've spent exploring this book has me so excited for doing some more cable knit things. Um, you know, this was my first Gansey and I, I really want to make more. Like I, I love the look of cables and things. So I'm super happy with this. Um, so thank you mystery person for this book. Um, I'm curious if it was a friend of mine. I, I only know one person who lives in Salt Lake, but I tried to ask them and they did not admit to it at all. So if it was you, I appreciate it. Things are going to start falling off my craft table. Hopefully not too badly. Um, I received from Nicole, oh, 
let me take these out of the package because I don't think you're going to be able to see them inside that shiny reflective packaging, but they are so cute. Um, they are stitch markers that are succulent themed. So this one is a little cactus. And this one's like a little succulent terrarium. Stop wiggling. Isn't that cute? So thank you so much, Nicole from Toronto. Those are adorable. Um, and I got a lot of pretty cards. Some of them are currently filed with all of my Christmas cards um, because I display my Christmas cards and then I gather them up at the end of December and I bundle them all together. Um, so I have done that already for the season. So some of the Christmas cards got bundled up with those things. From the wonderful host of My North Knit Corner, which I enjoy watching very much, I received some hand-dyed yarns. Look at that. This is so my colors. Beautiful, beautiful. They are 75% superwash, 25% polyamide. They are sock yarns, fingering weight. And I am super excited to use them. And then she also sent, okay, I may have, if there were candy in packages that people sent me, I may have eaten that already. So just, just know that if you sent candy, I appreciated every single bit of it and I already ate it, um, at least most of it. <laughs> anyway, um, some of this stuff has gotten mixed up, so I'm gonna try and remember what was from who, but she sent me teas as well. Um, lots of tea bags. And I love tea, and I love having a cup um, every day. So it's been really nice to try some new varieties. And then I'm trying to remember, I'm sorry because I'm getting everything all mixed up. The bag of stitch markers, I think, came from her as well. Um, but I, I could be totally wrong and I'm sorry if I'm messing all this up. But I got a, is he a, a lobster or a crab? I don't know. Um, he's adorable. I have a hedgehog. He is super cute. And a bicycle. And if I reread the notes that came with everything and figure out I have credited the wrong person, I will put that down in the comments. And I am so sorry if I have. Um, but... If you have not watched the My North Knit Corner podcast, you really, really should because I enjoy spending time with her every time she uploads. Um, I find her podcast to be soothing and enjoyable to watch, and I think that her projects are always interesting, and she has such a pretty background. I wish that my background was as gorgeously covered in yarn as hers is so very jealous of that but check out my north knit corner um and i will link that below as well kelly sent me this cute little tea light holder where you actually fold it up and put it together and you put a tea light in it and it projects little stars on the wall and I happen to have a whole box of electric tea lights, so I don't even have to worry about it being a fire hazard. And it makes really pretty ambient light. So that's been a joy to have. And then she also sent, she was the one who sent that tea. And I think maybe this stitch marker, I'm sorry. Um, and a cute note and even a drawing from her kiddo. <laughs> which I love because my kids like to send drawings too. So I have those things um, that I am super thankful for. And then 
Claudia um, is from Germany and Claudia sent me an amazing surprise package. Um, I just, I can't even. It, this beautiful sock yarn, she said, is hand dyed in Germany and she said it does not contain any plastic. So there is no polyamide or nylon. The label says that it contains tinsel, um, but it could be a naturally derived tinsel. Um, so I can't pronounce anything on the label. I cannot read it, but I know that she says that it is a sock yarn, that the colorway is winter holidays, and it is totally right up my alley. She said she has the same colorway in her stash and that she finds this to be very squishy to knit with, and it's definitely squishy in the hands, so I'm excited for that. She also sent me a jar of, I think you say, quince or quince, quince, I don't know, jam from fruit, from trees that she has. And I love to make jam. And so I'm very excited because it was a fruit I've never even heard of. Um, and I haven't opened it yet, but it's downstairs. So sorry, I forgot to grab that to show. But um, I'm very excited to open it and taste it. And then there was also dark chocolate covered gingerbread um, that she said is like her favorite holiday treat and I am in love and so next December I may be begging people who have access to foods from Germany to send me another package because wow uh, I can see why it's her favorite holiday food because it was so good and I couldn't resist eating it um, but also she sent me Little chocolate pigs for the new year. Um, she said they bring luck, and so I can always use luck for the new year. And also some sock needles. Um, she said that these tiny sock needles were not her cup of tea, so she just wanted to pass them along. And then there's this little ornament that she taped to the package. So I was very excited about that. Um, she also, she remembered me saying how much we like camping. So the Christmas card has a little camper on it, which is so cute and I love it. So I'm going to be putting that with my Christmas card collection because I am, um, I do like to keep all those things together. And um, if there was something else in the package, I'm sorry, I've, I've probably eaten it if it was food. Um, I think that was everything from those. Um, Sue, who is Crafty Knitter 7 on Instagram and has the Distant Stitches podcast, which you should check out if you haven't before. Um, she sent me more of the chocolate with the maple crunchies in it that I had posted on Instagram that I loved from her first package. And she sent me two more bars and I've already eaten one of them and it was so good. Um, and I think all these minis have gotten mixed up. Um, I think these mini skeins were also from her. Um, so I'm excited to use them for like toes and heels on the kids socks or for some crazy scrappy socks. Um, but thank you so much, Sue. And I'm sorry, I'm trying not to rush through this too much, but I also don't want to make you sit here for like two hours worth of, I got new yarn. Um, because that's not everybody's thing. I did get cute little mini skeins from my husband as the lead up to Christmas, almost like an advent calendar, except that he either <laughs> tossed them to me or left them on my pillow or, you know, just did various things with them throughout the month. Um, so there were 12 of these little mini skeins. And I think that it might have been like a mermaid theme. He was not super forthcoming with information during the month as he was doling them out to me. Um, but they are all so pretty. They are all speckled. Um, only a couple of them are variegated. Mostly they are tonals with speckles, which is awesome. And I thought about using a bunch of these and doing a scrappy muscle burra hat, 
because there's so many bright colors in there. And, um, and I know I could do a gorgeous one from that, and I might sometime. Does anyone else have the problem of every skein of yarn you look at, you go, that could make a really pretty muscle bra hat. And, and like pretty soon you're going to end up with 10,000 muscle bra hats and nothing else. Um, because that's kind of where I'm at. I look at especially like speckled and variegated yarns and I'm like, that could make a really pretty muscle bra hat. Hmm. Anyway, the, um, I finally got information on the dyer when he gave me a full size skein, um, on the last night and it is lamb woman knits and she's available on Etsy and the full skein is called Midsummer Mermaid and it is blue and purple um, mostly purple speckles on a blue tonal um, it is a smooth sock yarn it says 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon and she can be found on Instagram at lambwoman um, and I will link her information below, but that is all from my husband for the holidays and sorry for the crinkling. Um, I haven't decided what to do with those yet, but I am open to ideas if you have them. Um, let's see, sorry, gotta check the time. It's a short day at school today, so I have to pick up my daughter um, fairly early, so I don't want to be late. Um, so we're going to keep going on the acquisitions real quick. On Christmas Day, I got to open a number of knitting goodies. Um, I received some pom-pom makers, which I don't need to show you. Most of you know what a pom-pom maker looks like, but I'm very excited because they're in various sizes, and usually I'm like cutting a piece of cardboard to try and do my own pom-poms every time so they're not consistent size-wise and things. So I'm excited to have real pom-pom makers. And then I also got a set of four square needles from Knit Picks from my mom. I had the shorty tips from my husband and I found that I actually loved the square shape of the needles. And because I'm such a loose knitter and I've learned more about how the material of your knitting needle affects your gauge. Um, I found that going back to wooden needles is actually pretty good for me. Um, metal needles are fast, but my gauge tends to get very loose. And so the wooden needles are actually very comfortable in my hands, but the tips on the full size four square needles are much sharper than the tips on the shorties. So just know that if you're looking into those, much pointier than the shorty tips, but I still love them. Um, I love how they feel. Also got a couple of needle binders and when I actually get them organized, I plan to show them on the podcast, but they are not there yet. Um, right now it's just everything kind of dumped and looking at it and trying to decide where it's gonna go. But from my husband and my kids, I got more yarn and I'm very excited about this because if you remember, I made um, from Kelborn Woolen's Mojave, I did the outline tank um, last summer. So this is more of the Mojave and I actually got two skeins of the, um, and it's a 60% cotton, 40% linen blend. I love how it wears. So I'm especially excited about it. I'm looking for the color name, Sky Blue. So two skeins of Sky Blue. Sorry for the crinkling. Two more skeins of Prussian Blue. And two skeins, one of my kids colored that sack, of Smoke Gray. So, um, having a hard time holding it all. Okay, so you can see that the colors actually go really well together. I have two skeins of each, and each skein is um, hundred and eighty five yards or one hundred and seventy meters to fifty grams. So 
I should have plenty to do like a striped top or a color blocked top, like a tee, um, even an oversized tee, because I think I used three skeins on that outline tank. And so I kind of want to look back at Jessie Maid has a ton of really beautiful summer tops. And so I think I want to look and see if there's anything at that same gauge as the outline tank. I'm not sure I want to do the outline tee, but maybe. Um, anyway, something at the same gauge because I could use the same yarn and do something like that. But I love the color choices that my husband and kids made. Um, I think they got them from a local store um, downtown in Tulsa. But I love this cotton linen blend and it is one of my absolute favorites for the summertime. So I am going to probably hold off on this until spring as far as knitting it up because I know I want it to be a summer top um, and I just haven't decided which one yet. And who knows, like a brand new summer top pattern could come out and it could be just the thing. But I'm going to explore some Jesse made patterns. Sorry for the crinkling. Um, to decide what I want to do and marinate on that for a bit. Another thing, woo, awkward reaching. <laughs> Another thing that my husband got me that is yarn related um, is a tapestry kit. Um, sorry for the reflection there. So it is all pinks, purple, gray, white, and then you punch out the little weaving loom and the tiny little shuttles and everything is together in one kit. So you can make a little tapestry. Um, and so I think that'll be fun because I want to do a few more crafty projects that aren't necessarily knitting. Um, my computer battery is telling me that it is about done. So hold on. I have a feeling that this is a really long episode. So um, I don't know if I'm sorry about that, but I'm just so excited to have today to film. Since I had to run downstairs for a charging cable, I grabbed the jelly and they're in this bag to stay fresh. Um, those amazing chocolate covered gingerbread things. Sorry for the crinkling so that you could see what I was talking about. Um, so that is the label on the package and they, um, they look like this, but they're not hard like a cookie. I'm going to break one open because I'm going to eat it anyway. They are soft inside like when you make delicious homemade gingerbread. So soft and fluffy. I have so many knitting plans for the new year. Um, I've been trying not to overset goals for myself, like I mentioned before. Um, and I've been trying to really think through how I want to use my time, what I want to end up with, um, how much gift knitting I want to do, and really thinking about my yarn stash and how I want to use it. And like I said, trying to be more intentional with my shopping, um, not just buying a random skein of this or that, because I get that with my subscriptions and with yarn exchanges and things like that. Um, but with like buying a sweater's quantity um, and, and kind of having a pattern in mind already. Oh, I didn't show you the rest of my advent calendar from the Creative Knitter. That's awesome. There's more awkward bending and leaning um, and lots of noise. My pom-pom makers have been stuck in the box too, but I'm just going to post pictures at the end. Woo! Just throwing stuff everywhere with them all lined up um, because I did take photos. But I mean, it is a rainbow of awesomeness. And if you have a rainbow pattern idea, 
Look at this craziness. I mean, every day was an exciting, beautiful, bright. I mean, it was called the Brights Advent Calendar, so like you knew it was going to be bright. But really, I mean, look at this. And then on the final day was this speckled yarn. So it is a like a natural or a cream with all these bright speckles in it. So all of this gorgeousness, I have to decide what to do with. I don't really want to do like, I haven't found like an advent pattern that I wanted to use these for. I'd really like to do some kind of rainbow garment. And I've been trying to think through that. Um, so there's this that could be like collars, cuffs, and bottom ribbing on whatever. And then all of these colors. There's a pattern I saw recently. I'll have to look up the name and try and link it below. That you hold two strands together through the whole thing. And so I could start with two of the colors like, and just keep dropping one and adding a different one and transitioning that way all the way through the whole thing. And I could do it in rainbow order or I could do it in just crazy order. Um, anyway, so much yarn, so much beautiful yarn, like have not decided what to do with that, but I feel like it needs to be wearable art. So if you have ideas or recommendations or thoughts on how to make something beautiful, rainbowy, and wearable, 100% please put them in the comments below. Um, I'm going to wrap it up for this time because not only has it been long, it's been completely disorganized because there was so much I wanted to say and share. Um, I've probably forgotten something. I don't know what yet. Thank you for joining me. Um, I know it was kind of a different and slightly messier location, but I wanted to be able to share all these things. And I knew that if I tried to haul everything out to the dining room or the living room, I would set myself back in cleaning. And I'm really trying to get control of the common areas of the house um, and just have a little bit more peace because they're not messy and giving me anxiety from the mess and stuff. So um, I'm going to work on cleaning up my craft room, but I appreciate you being here. If you have made it this far, um, that's amazing. And leave some kind of comment telling me that you made it to the end, because I think that I'm going to do a stash sharing surprise package. So if you've made it this far, say something about stash sharing in the comments um, or tell me your favorite color um, or something, but something that indicates that you have made it this far in the podcast and I'm not going to mention it at any other time. So it's only if you've made it all the way to the end, but thank you for being here. Um, likes, subscribes, comments, they all mean the world to me. You don't have to, it's not required, but I really appreciate it each and every time. Um, I hope that you will join me again when I go over my make nine for 2022 and um, as we get back into the regular swing of podcasting because hopefully the kids will stay in school and my husband will be back to his regular work schedule and I will be back to my normal schedule and things can kind of get back into a rhythm. Um, but. Also, I'd love to hear what you're working on. Um, I always am interested in hearing what new patterns have inspired you or if there's a small designer that you have fallen in love with. I will draw prizes soon for the knit alongs from the fall and I hope to not be nearly as long between recordings the next time. So thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. <laughs>